The Sony Alpha 7 IV has arrived and it's a great hybrid camera for both photography and video. Today we're going to set it up specifically for video by going through the menus so that you know this camera inside and out. Let's get started. First thing we want to do is put this into movie mode and if you're coming from other Sony cameras you might notice this is a little different. Even the movie symbol has changed. On the top I'm going to set this to M for manual because I like to have complete control of my camera. Starting with the function button this will pop up 12 quick access menu items. This can be customized, but these are the defaults. Audio record level, this is useful to keep handy if you're frequently changing audio inputs like microphones. I like to keep the level oh, around 20. Next is focus mode, which I don't use here as it's by default mapped to C3. So if you wanna change this to something else you can, but this changes from autofocus to manual focus. Focus area, we can change the area that the camera tries to focus on. I think wide works okay for most situations, but you can play around with these. Picture profile is important and you can change between all of them here. I use S-Log3 with S Gamma 3 Cine color mode, which I found in picture profile eight. All I change here is upping the detail from minus seven to minus three. If I'm shooting at night, I'll stay at minus seven. Otherwise I found minus three works pretty well. Next is zebra display and I like turning mine on. And next to that is zebra level. If you frequently use a gray card for exposure with S-Log3 like I do, Set your zebra levels to 41 with a range of two or so. Otherwise, I would set the zebras to a lower limit of 94 plus. And if you see zebras pop up, that part of the image is overexposed. Peaking display and level are for manual focus, showing you what's in focus. So I like to turn this on and for level, mid or low works best. I found highs a little too misleading and can make things look more in focus than they actually are. Next is white balance and I'm frequently changing this. I don't use auto and I like to pick a color. So for my studio lights, that's 5,500 Kelvin right now. Steady shot is next. There's not much point to turning this off, but I would keep it on standard unless you're really creating some shaky footage as active creates a digital zoom for stabilization. Focus map is new on the Alpha 7 IV and it shows you what is and isn't in focus by color. You can see the little cameraman is in focus, but everything with the color is not. Blue means the focus point is closer and red and orange means the focus point is farther away. This does only work with compatible lenses. Could be a useful tool, but I'm gonna keep it off. Last here is record media settings, which allows you to set priorities for videos or photos in different slots, as this camera has two slots for recording, one for SD or CF Express type A, and another just for SD. Okay, that's it for the function menu. Let's take a look at the buttons. New on this camera is a blank wheel that's normally reserved for exposure compensation. By default, it's still set to that, but it can be changed to something else, which we'll do later. C1 by default will change white balance, which is useful, and C2 will change the focus area. C3 will change from auto to manual focus. Let's jump into the menus now, starting with image quality. File format, this is organized from most difficult to easiest to edit. I use XAVC SI 4K for the highest quality image and easiest editing on my machine. The 4K only shoots up to 60 FPS on this camera, so if you want that 120 frames per second super slow motion, you'll have to choose one of the HD options instead. I should also point out that for most of the menu items, you can hit the trash bin and it will explain the settings, so that's pretty useful. Selects the movie file format. There you go. Under movie settings, I'm going to set the frame record rate to 24 and not 30 because I'm not a monster. The record settings is grayed out because there's only one option based on the file format I chose, but it's a high quality 422 10-bit. Coming out of the menu for a quick second, I'm going to set my shutter speed to double my frame rate or close enough to 1 over 50 in this case. When I save my camera settings later, I want to make sure my frame rate and shutter speed are all in sync and ready to go. Back to the menu, the S and Q or slow and quick settings. I want to match the record frame rate to 24 and under frame rate, because I'm in 4K, the highest I can choose is 60 frames per second. Here you can set your proxies, which I don't use. Next is APS-C Super 35 shooting mode. Because this camera has an oversampled 7K sensor, you can use this in 4K, unlike the Sony a7S III, so that can be useful for zooming in the image without having a zoom lens. New to the Alpha 7 IV is this breathing compensation, which gets rid of that weird breathing that occurs with some lenses by slightly cropping in. Okay, in media, we can format our memory card. In file settings, I usually change this file name format to title plus date. So each file can have a different name and it's pretty well organized. And then under title name settings, I usually create a custom name that tells me what camera this is. So for this case, BGA74. Okay, on to shooting mode. Camera set memory is very important. This is where you can utilize the one, two, three dials on top of the camera by saving your settings. On my Sony a7S III, I use each one of these for different frame rates, one for 24, one for 60, and one for 120 frames per second. There's also four more slots, M1, 2, 3, and 4, that can be saved to your memory card. When we're done with the setup, I'm gonna come back here and save my camera settings. USB streaming is 
probably my favorite new feature on this camera. All you have to do is take the included USB cable and plug it into your computer and run any webcam program and you have a webcam. Under resolution and frame rate, you can pick from a few options, but I'm gonna stick with HD 30p. Enabling movie recording will eat up more battery, but this allows you to record your streaming internally onto a memory card, so that's pretty cool. Next up is silent mode settings. I like my camera to be silent and I really dislike that record beeping noise, so I'm gonna turn this on. In audio recording, we covered the audio record level in the function menu, but audio out timing is useful because there's virtually no lag to recording audio versus video, and the audio can sometimes appear ahead of the video. So if this annoys you, you can change to lip sync so that everything matches up. It does not annoy me, so I'm gonna leave mine. Under wind noise reduction, there's an auto that has been added to the camera. This will process your auto to reduce noise for the internal microphone only. I like seeing the audio level display, so I'm leaving that on too. Next up is a section for time code, which I don't use often, but if you do, here it is. Zoom. You can change the zoom range from optical only to clear image or digital. Digital produces some noticeable loss in quality, but clear image zoom works pretty good, and it allows you a 1.5x zoom on your camera. I would suggest if you plan on using it, making the zoom a quick access button, but I'm gonna leave mine on optical only. Under the shooting display, I like turning on the grid line display for framing. I use this first one for the rule of thirds, but feel free to play around with the other ones. And maybe the most important setting to enable for me is this emphasize record display, which puts this fancy red border around the image while you're recording. Really useful when you're standing far away from the camera and you wanna make sure it's recording. Marker displays are a more aggressive version of the grid line display. They're pretty cool, so it comes down to personal preference. You can really get pretty crazy with these. Okay, on to exposure. Auto slow shutter is only used if your shutter is on auto, which mine is not, but it allows your shutter to get real slow. ISO, there's a quick access to ISO here, so you'll generally be changing ISO not from this menu, but it's important to note the two native ISOs on this camera are ISOs 800 and 3200 in S-Log3, so if you're using that, try and stay at one of those if possible. You can see the first native ISO is the first one not underlined. Shockless white balance is how quickly your white balance changes if it's on auto. I personally think one is too fast, so I would probably go with two or three so it's less jarring. Color tone I leave alone, and zebra display we've already covered in the function menu. On to focus. Autofocus, manual focus mode we've covered in the function menu and it's also mapped to C3, but this AF transition speed is pretty important. I like to turn this down a little bit as well as the AF subject shift sensitivity. Unless you have a fast moving scene, I like this to stay a little more locked on one person. I love this AF assist feature. If enabled, you can rack focus with your lens in autofocus and if you miss, autofocus will correct it to whatever you were trying to focus on. Without this enabled, the focus ring on your lens will be disabled. It's a nice marriage between manual and auto. In the focus area, I like changing the focus area color to red because it's easier to see. If you prefer your focus area to be a spot, I would enable circulate of focus points so you could wrap around the frame instead of getting stopped on the edges. Under face eye autofocus, you can now choose three different subjects, human, animal, or bird. Aren't birds animals? Aren't humans also animals? So animal is any non-bird, non-human animal. And if you're filming the sequel to Birdman, uh, I don't know what to tell you. In Focus Assistant, I like to change mine to times four so I'm really zoomed in right away. Okay, I'm gonna skip to setup. In Finder Monitor, I like to disable the viewfinder because I don't really use it and I don't want it to accidentally be activated by my hand, so I'll choose Monitor. In the display option, because I shoot S-Log3, I want the Gamma Display Assist on. So this is just for your display and it will not bake anything in your image, but it gives you an idea of what your final image might look like. Under the power settings option, I'm gonna change the power save start time to off because that drives me nuts when it goes off every minute of being idle. All right, finally, I'm gonna customize some of my buttons. Under the dial customize, there's a custom key setup for both photo and video. We're gonna go into photo. A lot of the video settings are just following the photo version, but if you only wanna change the buttons for the video, you can do that instead. In rear two, I'm gonna set the center button to zebra display select because I like to toggle that on and off. For the down button, I'm gonna set the toggle for the full frame super 35 crop as I like to bounce back and forth between those. C2, I'm gonna change to the focus magnifier. Lastly, I'm gonna set the dial wheel number three to ISO. It's nice to be able to scroll through the ISOs and you can also lock it in. And the rest for now, I'm gonna keep the same. To save all these settings, go back to the shooting mode and set camera memory. I'm gonna save this under number one. If you remember, we set the frame rate to 24 frames per second and the shutter speed to one over 50. I like to be able to quickly change frame rates, so after saving this, 
Now I'm gonna go back to movie settings and change the frame rate to 60 frames per second. Then I'll pop out of the menu and set the shutter speed to one over 125. Now I'll head back into this set camera memory and choose number two. So now to switch between 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second, all I have to do is change the dial on top. There's a third one for whatever else you might need. Make sure to also save all these settings to a memory card using reset save settings. Otherwise something will happen and the camera will get reset and then this whole thing was just a giant waste of time. Okay, that's it. Let me know in the comments below if this was helpful and if it was, maybe check this one out next.